It's like it's, a Parker House, Chinese Parker House roll with garlic. Exactly. That's a beautiful thing. It is. It's gorgeous. I'm going to eat it. So this came from, from this Golden Steamer? This came from Steamer. Golden Steamer, which is our go-to uh, steam bun place. And they obviously do baked things, too. And they do... Uh, I also... I also bought a couple of salted egg ones because they do filled ones too, but they're just kind of perfect little. Delicious. Isn't that? It's delicious. You know if what? I, if I lived here and worked here, we wouldn't be in these chairs right now because I wouldn't be able to wedge my fat butt into it. <laughs> Luckily, I live in Atlanta where there is no go-to steam bun place. <laughs> exactly. You know, um, well, where I live, a steam bun place would be like the gym, you know, because... You know, I know, but we, we love this place. Delicious. And they they do pumpkin buns, mm. her favorites. Salty egg, which I brought a couple of, one for you to try. Um, it's amazing. Pork buns. Of course. Um, what else have you eaten there? Oh, they do those hot dog, those weird hot dog buns. Which I grew up eating things like this. You did? What's weird about it? They just, it's just odd to me that Chinatown is filled with things like where they take a Chinese construct mm -hmm. and put a hot, and just like put American things in. And it's become, like you see it everywhere, right? Like hot dogs have become, a, and you don't see hot dogs in China, right? Yeah, you do, but they're actually made of dog. <laughs> They're dog hots. Yeah, dog pops. It's different, different kind of thing altogether. You, know, you occasionally find veins in them. They're like sea lobe foie gras. <laughs> like I got a vein. It's, it's funny. So yeah, we you know it's that's what's cool about the neighborhood. It's very good. We you know we can get a steam bun. We can get one of those baked ones, <clears throat> and. And they're really carefully made. Like I took Susan Feininger there, mm -hmm. and she was like, "I got to figure out how they do this." You know, it's like she was like, she kept looking at it. You know, like, how do they how do they get it this way? It must be terrible to not be able to just enjoy your food, to look at it and, and have to figure out how. Well, they I think get that's it. what sh uh, that's what chefs do. Yeah, you know? I, I I I can tur completely turn it off. Right. I, it's like I'm not going to dice. I'm just going to eat this. Like really? use my lizard brain as opposed to any other functions and just enjoy it. That's yeah, interesting. That. Because Completely. I would think that you would be also hmm. thinking about it. If I want to, but I can turn that stuff off. Absolutely. I can so you can compartmentalize. Off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And so people always say to me, oh, you know, are you going to be real critical about it? I feel like, look, at one level, I think if you lose your ability to just enjoy the food, without thinking a whole lot about it, then you've cut yourself off from what got you into food to begin with. So no, you know, the, the, the act of dissection and examination should be, uh, I mean, that's pathology. That right. should, that's, that's way downstream of, of the, the pleasure centers. You need to scrub in for that. Yes, I'm gonna scrub in for that. Absolutely, I'm gonna scrub in for that. That's work. Right. And, and work's good, work's fun, work's pleasurable, but just eating. You know, it's like if I'm in the South and I go to some great barbecue place, I'm not going to immediately try to figure out how they did the barbecue. I'm just going to enjoy the barbecue. Right. And that was fun, like when we did those things for um, feasting on pavement. Was feasting that on asphalt. <laughs> there, feasting That's on asphalt, it whatever it was. It was just like... Feasting on pavement. <laughs> That's the crappiest title. Feasting on asphalt, good title. Feasting on pavement. <laughs> but the point is, is that... That was really, it was really great to watch you in that context because you weren't, you didn't have the lab coat on. It was just like, what makes this great? You know, not just from a food perspective and from a pleasure perspective, but also from a cultural context, which is what you were interested in. That was in. the part that was most interesting, yeah. And if I ever got a chance to do that again, I would go even more into that and, and, and the, the personalities and the people and how they got where they are and why they do what they do. Because people that cook for other people are interesting to me. There's, there's something about the mentality of people that are willing to prepare food for other people that I think is interesting. And, you know, chefs always talk about um, the pleasure of cooking for other people. Yes. Do you feel that same... I, I do, yeah, absolutely. I, the, the thing I like about cooking is cooking for people. It's that act of service that's actually the, the one side of the hospitality um, 
equation. You know, there's the giving and the taking, and both need to be done graciously. Both have a lot of pleasure in them. Uh, but I do find that cooking for people is very satisfying at any level. And um, my wife claims that we don't get invited to dinner very often because I'm in the food world. Do you find people are intimidated by the idea of cooking for you? And, yeah. You know. Until they've done it once. <laughs> because I never, I never complain about the food and I'll always offer to wash up. So um, we, get, we get asked back. If we can get asked one time, we'll get back. But a lot of people are like, oh no, I'm, I'm too worried I'm, to cook for you. you, you and I'm like, what have I possibly done to make it look like I would criticize your food? To look, you know, what do you think I'm going to do? Come in and say, this salad sucks. Don't, <laughs> nobody eat this. Put, just put your fork down. If you can't do better than this, we're just, look, let's just go out. <laughs> I've never done that. I've never been anything but grateful for any morsel put in front of me. I'll, I might complain about it later, but never then and there. But yeah, because of that, people don't want to don't want to cook for you. And and before you were on TV and doing what you're doing, that wasn't the issue. That was never an issue, right? No. No. It's also amazing how once you're on TV uh, doing food of any type, all the people around you who used to know you all of a sudden no longer know how to cook. My mom, who had successfully cooked for you know a lot of years, suddenly couldn't boil water anymore, and would call me up to get instructions on. So would I put the water in the pot and then turn on the heat? Or I'm like, what are you talking about? Why did everybody get dumb all of a sudden? Because everybody just assumes that once you take on this mantle of expert, that they should come to you for everything, which is ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's true.